The Veterans of Foreign Wars post in Ocean City, New Jersey, is a home away from home for Jack Ferranti and George Savitsky. Goodbye. Most days you can find them here, surrounded by other men of the World War II generation. Thank you, Jack. But Ferranti and Savitsky share a special distinction. They were teammates with the world champion Philadelphia Eagles in 1948 and 49. The Eagles were a team that embodied the character of post-war America. The people of those days, the players of those days, were very brash individuals. They didn't think they could lose. They won a war, so they when they came back, they thought they could win every war. I've often thought about the group of guys that we joined in 1946 with the Eagles. Most of those had been in the service and were recently discharged as I was. And we had something in common to talk about, but we also had that gratitude in our heart and our mind to be back with our families staying in a place where we could shake hands and be with our friends daily. And it did add a lot of esprit de corps. We, I think, helped us out along the way. There's no question in my mind uh, that you're a changed person, a nice, little, easy-going kid that didn't know anything. Uh, and then he goes into the war. And it's easy to come back with a, with a killer instinct. Chuck Bednarik played 14 seasons with the Eagles and was one of the most feared linebackers in the game. Number 60 played football with the attitude that only the strong survive. It was an attitude Bednarik developed as an 18-year-old, flying combat missions over Europe. He was a gunner on a B-24 bomber, and he survived some of the bloodiest fighting of the war. You're in constant fear. You, you just don't know if you're gonna take a mission and come back the next day. And I could remember pew, 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 flag holes in the one of bomb explodes, that thing is flying, the shrapnel coming through the plane and you drop the bombs and they say, let's get the hell out of here. There's a tattoo here, it's kind of faded. It's a rose and it had mother written on here. And after my third or fourth mission, I went to a tattoo parlor and I had this tattoo put on it in the event that if I didn't get shot down and some of my body parts were, they would be able to identify me. Pete Pijos, like Bednarik, had a Hall of Fame career with the Eagles. But before he ever caught a pass in the NFL, Pijos served as an army lieutenant on the battlefields of Europe. In the war, and, it's, and you're in the infantry, uh, I wasn't in the backfield. I was up in the front. Pijos was attached to the 35th Infantry, which meant he was part of the Allied landing force at Normandy. It was a massacre because there were 35,000 bodies around the war. All you do is say, I, I hope today I, I, get, I get live through it and everything comes out right, and I hope that I take care of my men the same way. Pijos was a platoon leader under the command of the legendary general George Patton. He told us what we we're going to do, and he was going to be there to see it. He was there to lead the, lead the team, just like a football coach. Eagles coach Earl Greasy Neal used a different kind of leadership. Neal understood that these returning veterans represented a new breed of NFL players, older men hardened by years of combat, men who had not only seen the world, but helped to save it. How can you tell a guy that's been out fighting in, in the battles and all that to begin at 9, 30, 10 o'clock? So we didn't have a curfew with, uh, with Reese he, he knew better. <laughs> I love playing for him. And I think we played harder because of the type of guy he was. The Eagles had the biggest star of the post-war era in running back Steve Van Buren, whose power and speed were a perfect fit for Neal's innovative offense. We were the ones that had the shotgun the first time. You know, like they always rave about the West Coast offense. And they never say anything about shotgun. And that irks me because that there, they do now, is from us. Reezy always came up every game with some kind of in, a new idea, a new trick play, and it worked. Most of the time it would work. Neil's Eagles won three conference titles and back-to-back -back world championships. They will always be listed among the greatest teams in Eagles history. 
and the bond among those players is as strong as ever. I'm with the greatest, don't worry about it. You're all buddy, buddy, buddies. Jack Ferrani. We're like brothers, all of us. And I don't think you uh, would find that today. We were there because we just loved the game. I don't feel football owes me a penny. I had the greatest time in my life. We had to buy these. It cost us $50. And most of the guys bought them because, you know, it's a nice thing to have. I was offered $2,000 by a, a mobilia man, and I, and I wouldn't sell this. I wouldn't sell it for the world. I lived such a full life uh, when I think about the toughness of the, the coming up and then surviving the war and then going through what I did in sports. I can't walk through the airport without people saying, how you doing, Chuck, or coming up to me. That makes me feel so happy and so proud. It, you know, money can't buy that kind of stuff. I appreciate those people coming up to me and saying, are you Chuck? Are you Chuck? <laughs>